If you're thinking about buying a Tesla but aren't sure where to start or if it's actually even possible to save money in ongoing running costs, well, in today's video, I'm breaking down the true real world cost of owning a Tesla versus a comparable gas vehicle after about 30,000 miles of driving. These aren't estimates or marketing claims. These are actual ownership costs that I have experienced. We'll go through every major category that matters. Charging versus fuel, maintenance, insurance, fees, and the costs people almost always forget to include. So stick around to point six later in the video so that you don't miss out. All right, now before we get into the numbers, we need to set some clear ground rules because a fair comparison matters, of course. Anytime you compare an EV to a gasoline vehicle, three things have to stay consistent. Number one, how the car is driven. Number two, what class of vehicle it is. And three, how efficient it actually is in the real world. So for this breakdown, I'll be using a Tesla Model 3, either you know the rear wheel drive or long range version. In real world driving, these tend to average between 25 and 27 kilowatt hours per 100 miles driven, which works out to roughly 3.7 to 4 miles driven per kilowatt hour of energy used, right in line with EPA ratings and owner data. And for mileage, we'll be looking at roughly 35,000 miles of driving spread out over roughly two years. That's a very normal usage pattern in both the US and Canada when you factor in daily commuting, weekend driving, and a few longer road trips each year. Now let's talk about the biggest day-to-day -day cost difference, charging versus gas. For this comparison, we'll assume most charging happens at home with some fast charging mixed in for longer trips and road trips. That's important because charging habits have a massive impact on costs. And this is also how the majority of Tesla owners actually use their cars in the real world. On the gas side, we'll compare against a typical 30 mile per gallon sedan, something like a Honda Civic or Hyundai Elantra using current average gas prices. So what does that look like over 35,000 miles? Well, using a conservative average of about 26 kilowatt hours per 100 miles, a Tesla would use roughly 9,000 kilowatt hours of electricity to drive that distance. And at typical residential electricity rates, that works out to anywhere on average between $1,600 to $1,800 total for most owners, considering that we'd be using an average cost of 18 to 20 cents per kilowatt hour charging at home. And keep in mind, this could vary massively from state to state or province to province. Here at my house in Quebec, which is a province in Canada, the average cost per kilowatt hour is only 8 cents. So that previous 35,000 mile calculation would equal roughly $730. Definitely take the time to run this exercise for yourself for more accurate values though. Now compare that to a 30 mile per gallon gas car. Well, driving 35,000 miles would require about 1,170 gallons of fuel, which at average gas prices comes out to roughly $3,500 to $3,700. So this means just on energy costs alone, driving a Tesla instead of a comparable gas car would save around $1,800 to $2,000 over this period. And that's using average assumptions. Also keep in mind, this comparison is against a very efficient gas sedan. If you're coming from a less efficient vehicle like a larger SUV or a larger, let's say, cylinder Mercedes or truck even, those savings grow much quicker. Next, let's talk about one of the biggest drivers of your real world fuel cost with an EV being where you actually charge. This is worth spending a moment on because it has a massive impact on the numbers. Basically, when you charge at home, that's where the savings really come from. As rates per kilowatt hour are cheaper and you can schedule charging for off peak hours if that applies to you. Most Model 3 owners charging at residential electricity rates end up paying just just a few cents per mile, which is why EVs are so cheap to drive day to day compared to gas cars. Fast charging, however, is a very different story. Public DC fast chargers, including superchargers of course for Teslas, typically cost two to even three times more 
per kilowatt hour than home charging. And at those rates, well, your costs per mile can climb into the same range as an efficient gasoline vehicle, especially if you rely on them very regularly. And so because of this, if you're someone who charges mostly on superchargers or you live in an apartment without access to home charging, the savings that we're talking about here can shrink dramatically, in some cases down to almost nothing. And that's why charging habits do matter so much in this exercise. Home charging isn't just more convenient long term, it's also what actually unlocks most cost advantages for owning an EV. And just to be clear, the numbers in this breakdown assume mostly home charging. So if your situation is different, well, your cost will be different as well. Next, let's talk about maintenance and repairs, because this is an area where EVs quietly save a lot more money than most people even expect. So with a Tesla, there are entire categories of maintenance that simply don't exist. There are no traditional engine oil changes, no spark plugs, of course, to replace, no transmission servicing, and no exhaust systems to worry about either, let alone the hundreds of other moving parts that wear out over time and need replacement. So for most of the early ownership period, maintenance on a Model 3 and Model Y are pretty minimal. You're mainly looking at tire rotations, cabin air filters, the occasional wheel alignment and basic wear items that would be present in any vehicle regardless though. Meaning that over the first 35,000 miles, most Model 3 owners aren't spending much more than a few hundred dollars total on maintenance. Now compare that to a gas car, well by 35,000 miles, a typical gas vehicle will have gone through multiple oil changes, likely more brake wear if not even a change in brake pads altogether, transmission or drivetrain inspections potentially and a steady stream of smaller services that add up over time. Even on a reliable, efficient sedan, these costs aren't trivial. In fact, when you look at national averages, EVs tend to cost around 30 to 40 percent less per mile to maintain compared to gas vehicles. In real numbers, a Model 3 might rack up around $400 to $600 in basic maintenance over 35,000 miles, if not more, while a comparable gas sedan often lands closer to the $1,200 to $1,500 range. So that's roughly another $1,000 in savings just on maintenance alone. And importantly, this gap tends to widen over time, not shrink. EVs are well known for reaching reaching 150,000 to even 200,000 miles with relatively minimal maintenance, simply because there are far fewer moving parts that can wear out. The two biggest concerns people usually bring up though are the battery and the electric motors of course, but the thing is in practice, these components have proven to actually be far more durable and reliable than many even expected. Tesla's drive units are designed to last the life of the vehicle when they're put in, well into the couple hundred thousand miles. And battery degradation tends to be gradual as well, not sudden off a cliff, with many owners seeing well over 70 to 80% capacity left over even after very, very high mileage in the hundreds of thousands of miles. So while no car is maintenance free forever, of course, the long term maintenance profile of an EV, especially something like a Model 3 or Model Y, is going to be fundamentally different than a gasoline vehicle. And it's one of the reasons ownership costs continue to favor EVs the longer you actually keep them. All right, now insurance is where things can get a bit more nuanced. Tesla insurance can be more expensive than a comparable gas car, and it really depends on where you live, your driving history, and which provider that you're using. That's something you absolutely wanna price out before buying though, not after. In fact, when I was personally shopping around for insurance for my Tesla, I saw quotes that varied by more than 100% for the exact same car and driver myself from one company to another, meaning one provider was literally double the price of another. That's how big the spread can be with Tesla's. That said, in areas where Tesla insurance, like that entity itself, Tesla insurance is available, drivers with good safety scores can sometimes end up paying similar or even lower premiums than comparable gas cars, right? Like a BMW or a Mercedes. But the key takeaway here isn't that insurance 
is cheaper, it's that it's extremely variable and it needs to be factored in upfront instead of being a surprise later on if you're looking at purchasing a Tesla. And by the way, I'm genuinely curious if you own a Tesla, drop a comment down below and let me know what you're paying for insurance and what model you have as well in model year. There's also one more cost category that gas cars largely don't deal with being EV registration fees, which is a newer concept. So by 2026, more than half of US states are expected to charge additional annual fees for electric vehicles to offset lost gas tax revenues. These typically range from 50 bucks to over $200 per year, which means that over 35,000 miles, you could be paying a few hundred dollars extra compared to a gas car with your yearly registration. That by the way is not a thing in Canada. Next up, let's talk about one of the biggest ownership costs that often gets overlooked being vehicle depreciation. And yes, before I get a comment about this down below, no, it's not technically a ongoing running cost. However, in my view, it still needs to be considered nonetheless in the total ownership cost calculation. Every car depreciates, but with Tesla's purchase price and resale values have been extremely volatile, much more than traditional gas vehicles over the past few years. And that's an important factor to understand and take into account. Used EV prices, including Tesla's of course, have dropped much faster than many comparable gas cars, largely because of rapid changes in the EV market. New models, evolving technology, shifting incentives as well, and many manufacturer price cuts themselves have all played a role here. And as a result, we've seen some EV prices fall more than 30% from their peak, which means owners who bought new during high price periods have taken a very large hit. For a Tesla Model 3, total depreciation over five years can easily land in the twenty dollars to $30,000 range, depending on when you bought and market conditions. And even within the first few years, around say that 35,000 mile mark that we've been looking over in this video, depreciation is often noticeably higher than on a comparable gas sedan. Now, this doesn't mean a Tesla is a bad buy. It just means that how long you keep the car does matter a lot here. Many of the savings that we've talked about, cheaper energy, lower maintenance, fewer repairs, they take time to add up and compound into a more cost efficient experience of ownership experience. And if you buy new and sell after only a few years though, well, those operating savings can easily be overshadowed by depreciation. Now where Teslas tend to make the most financial sense is buying used or keeping the car very long-term, well past 100,000 miles. And in those cases, the low running costs do start to outweigh the upfront higher cost and depreciation in a meaningful way. Bottom line though, if you're someone who frequently trades cars or you already know that you'll only keep the vehicle for a very short period of time, unless you're buying used and getting a killer deal on it, depreciation needs to be a core part of the overall decision, not an afterthought. One more thing that's worth mentioning here is incentives because they play a big role in how depreciation feels upfront. In both the US and Canada, EV incentives aren't as generous or as universal as they used to be. Some credits have been reduced, others are tied to income limits or vehicle eligibility, and in many cases, they no longer offset as much of the purchase price as they once did. That means buyers today are often absorbing more of the depreciation themselves, especially when buying new. That's also part of the reason we've seen manufacturers like Tesla push these lower priced standard models more recently. It helps bring the entry price down for their vehicles, but it doesn't fully eliminate depreciation altogether. For example, only a couple months ago in the US, you could get a $7,500 federal incentive. And up here in Canada, same thing. In Quebec, where I live, I was awarded $7,000 from the provincial government. That has now been reduced to 4,000. And federally, there was a $5,000 incentive for Teslas that's being completely 
completely wiped out as well. So that's a huge amount of money. What is that? Almost $9,000 where I live that has been wiped out that a buyer has to absorb. So personally, if I were buying a Tesla right now, strictly from a financial standpoint, I'd strongly consider one that's say one or maybe two years old, that's in great shape still and relatively low mileage. Now that we've covered everything, energy costs, maintenance, insurance, fees, and depreciation, let's talk about what this actually looks like when you put it all together. Over the first 35,000 miles, a Tesla Model 3 will typically come out around $1,000 to $2,000 cheaper to operate than a comparable gas sedan. That's without even factoring in longer term repair risks on gas cars, or the fact that EV batteries and motors are designed to last a very, very long time under normal use. Ultimately, though your actual savings depend heavily on your situation, where and how often you charge, what you pay for insurance, which is also dictated by where you live, local electricity prices, and how long you plan to keep the vehicle. And if you're considering a Tesla and want to be fully prepared, I've got many more resources linked down below in this video's description, including other great videos on my channel and accessories that I personally use and recommend over on my Amazon storefront. Check those out, link down below in the description and pinned comment of this video. So hopefully this gave you a realistic picture of what owning a Tesla actually costs compared to a gasoline vehicle. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.